Um, I realised that Roy was closing the cinema this month, and I thought it'd be great to get Tom's film here because I wasn't aware that it had a British screening. So it's uh, a real honour to have the British nice. premiere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. On a vision. <laughs> On a vision yeah. premiere. Yeah. <laughs> so here tonight, and in the splendour of the star. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's very nice to be back. It's very nice to be back at the star. Yeah. Thanks, Roy. Really, really appreciate it. Okay, so do you, do you want to do a little intro? I'll do a little we'll intro, just, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then we can talk more after in, in the house, if you like. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to just take this down a little while I'm talking, and then I'll, and then I'll put it up, if that's okay with everyone. Yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah, how this film started, started uh, just over three years ago now. And those of you that have seen the other film that I made, Leslie Howard, um, you, you will know that the Leslie Howard film was a, a, a huge, long process to make. It took almost 10 years. And um, we finally got it uh, on Talking Pictures and then on Turner Classic Movies in the United States. And when Turner Classic Movies were due to play it, Tracy, who's, who's not here tonight, Tracy and I had discussed this and we said, something is going to happen when they show Leslie Howard. Something is going to take place. For, for us. And um, two days after Leslie Howard was on TCM, I got an email from a guy by the name of Ron McCluskey. And Ron basically said, uh, I saw your film last night on Leslie Howard. I really, really enjoyed it. Would you be interested in making a film about Boris Karloff? He said, I've interviewed quite a few people. I've been trying to make this for, for a number of years. Um, the only thing is there's no money which of course is, is always the deal. Um, and having gone through the process of raising money over a prolonged period of time for Leslie Howard, which was tough because not enough people really know who he is, I thought, if I can do that with Leslie Howard, surely I can do it with, with Boris Karloff because a lot more people still know who he is and he still has a lot of fans. And so that encouraged me and I, and I said to Ron, okay, yeah, we'll do it, but we've got to do it completely fresh because what, when I saw his archive, it was very, it was very kind of um, home video, and it was, you know, you, you kind of basic sort of home cameras. And I thought we can't really use this stuff because it will, it will bring down the, the you know, the quality of, of any film that we make. So the idea was we had to go and do it fresh. And we also, I thought, when I did Leslie Howard, I was only able to interview a few people because. You know, there were very few people that knew him or remembered him. Uh, with Boris Karloff, we had a bit more of an opening there. And I thought, well, let's make this the opportunity where we get everyone we possibly can that is still, you know, that worked with Boris and is still around, as well as other people that have been influenced by him. So that was kind of part of the challenge of it was, you know, let's track all these people down, like Roger Corman and, you know, everyone like that. So, so you'll see a lot of these people tonight. And, um, and we had the Kickstarter campaign, and it, it was slow at first, and then someone contacted me and said, I'm very excited about this project, I'd like to put some money in. And he put in quite a substantial investment, which meant suddenly we could fly to LA and actually film people and, and you know, go to New York and stuff like that. So it, so it all kind of took off, and um, kept going for about a year, and then of course, you know what happened <laughs> to the world, and uh, everything just stopped. Um, in fact, the, the very last interview that we filmed um, prior to COVID happening is, is there's a clip of it in here, and it's a guy by the name of um, James B. And it was filmed just about two weeks before COVID really started to attract attention. And then there's a gap of another year and a half before we interviewed anyone else. Anyway. Um, uh, we didn't have any money to finish the film, it was kind of dragging on, and then finally we got, uh, I, I was able to edit something in February or March, and it got sort of shared around. There was a, this, um, a guy by the name of Richard Abramovitz in New York, who had a contact shout factory in LA, and he sent them it, and he said, I believe we can get this into cinemas for the 90th anniversary of Frankenstein. And they were very intrigued by that idea. And so basically, they did a deal with us. And I had essentially 10 weeks to finish the film. 
and deliver it so that it could be in cinemas in the US yeah. for September 17th. And I'll tell you how that went <laughs> after the film. But um, yeah, so that, that's, that's really how, how, how it came about. It was started off with you know, money and stuff, then it went very quiet for a while, and then we finally got another little burst at the end, and uh, we were able to finish it. And just one other little story before we go into this. Um, I'm very, I, I'm very sensitive to the music that is used in documentaries, and um, we had a great composer who did the music for Leslie Howard, and she, I offered her the job of, of doing this, and she said, Thomas, I hate horror films. I, 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 you'd have to pay me a lot of money to do something about horror films. I said, this isn't really about horror films. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not, you know, it's blood and gore, and she, she wasn't interested. So I actually went to the person who was the runner-up for Leslie Howard, who I'd, I'd said, you've only just missed, and I really like your music, and if we can work together in the future. And so I emailed her, and it was seven years later, and I said, do you remember me? <laughs> and she was like, I would love to do Boris Karloff. Mm -hmm. So so we got, we got, we got her, and, um, and I think you'll hear she does a lovely job. Yeah. Anyway, enjoy. Oh. Oh, sorry, sorry, I almost forgot, I almost forgot, thank you. Um, here, here's a little trivia 